Hey guys, welcome back once again to Pathology by Ranjit Ayar and in this PYT series, I'm going to talk about sickle cell anemia. So everything required to understand sickle cell anemia to apply the concepts in a simple question or a scenario based complicated question, be it need PGFM, joy, and history, this one page should be more than enough for us, right? So we're ready for the game. As usual, put on a smile and let's start discussing about sickle cell anemia. It's one of the hemoglobinopathies, right? Remember, sickle cell anemia is a an qualitative hemoglobinopathy, right? So we divide hemoglobinopathy in quantity and quality. Thalassemia, there's less production of the chain. We call them quantitative hemoglobinopathy. And sickle HBC, where the function or the quality of the hemoglobin is affected, we call them qualitative hemoglobinopathy, fine? So now, etiology, which I am sure that most of you guys will remember from right from your school days, right? Beta globin chain of the hemoglobin, sixth portion, glutamic acid becomes valine. Because of this transition, there will be reduced solubility of the hemoglobin. The reason is, valine is a hydrophobic amino acid. So, it will not be soluble or not be miscible properly, right? This is in sickle. So, in case of HBC, which is something which is in related to parallel to it, especially if you are preparing for INACD, this might come handy. Glutamine to lysine will result in HBC. In HBC, the hemoglobin becomes crystals. Crystallization is a problem in HBC and reduced solubility is a problem in case of a sickle cell anemia. It's undoubtedly an autosomal recessive inheritance because of the reduced solubility of hemoglobin and this solubility and the membrane damage is more in a deoxygenated state, right? So if it's a deoxygenated state, especially when it goes to the limbs where the oxygen is being sucked out of the hemoglobin, so it kind of narrows and clumps more aggressively. When the clumping is more aggressive, that clumps will go and cause a membrane damage, which results in a sickled RPC, right? So deoxygenated state, be it in the periphery, be it during inflamed tissue, right? Many places, wherever the oxygen levels is reduced, obviously it will result in case of a uh, more sickling event, and that will obviously result more and more and about the disease, fine? So now we have sickled RPCs. So in sickled RPCs, we have two different types of sickled RPC. One is an irreversibly sickled RPC, which means, it can never come back to normal. The other is an reversible sickled RBCs. The reversible sickled RBCs, it's nothing but normal RBC, deoxygenated state, membrane damage, becomes a sickle, comes back to oxygenated state, it becomes again normal. It's a cycle. So repeated cycles of this will result in irreversible sickling. The irreversible sickled RBC get trapped in the spleen and which will cause the hemolytic anemia, right? So primarily it's an extravascular hemolysis only, predominantly, right? Reversible sickle RBCs is actually the problem. The reversible sickle RBCs become sticky. Okay, since they are sticky, they stack on top of one another and they kind of go and block the tiny tiny vessels. We call them an vaso-occlusive crisis. Okay, sickle more than being an anemia, it's a very 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 painful disease because of tiny infarcts throughout the body, unexplained abdomen pain, recurrent sickle cell anemia. Over the period of time, can cause autosplenectomy. Dactylitis, the most common feature, because the periphery here will have be blocked, end artery will have an infarct, dactylitis, very common feature. Preapism, because penile erection is a vascular phenomenon, right? So the venous drainage will not be proper and again a painful engorgement of penis. Non-healing chronic leg ulcer, again leg deoxygenated, reversible cyclical RBCs, block them, cause an ulcer, will not heal because for healing granulation tissue will not happen, right? All of these, all of these will come under the heading of vaso-occlusive crisis. This is how the sickle cell anemia patient will present. Anemia will be there. I am not denying that at all, right? So this will be a presentation. Dactylitis is the most common presentation. Autosplenectomy is also an exa example of the same vaso-occlusive crisis. A recurrent destruction of the spleen, tiny, 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 for the period of years, completely gone, right? It will not be at one year. It will take some time for the spleen to get destroyed. A recurrent infarct, right? Like I said, preapism. Especially in men, like 40 to 50 percent of the men present with preapism. No one will think of a sickle cell anemia, but please remember, especially in the belt where sickle cases are more common, remember this is one of the etiologies. A chronic non healing ulcer. There also you'll see the same thing. Classically, say the sickle cell anemia, right? Last but not least, we have a very, very, very dangerous situation question acute chest syndrome. So, in acute chest syndrome, the same sickle RBCs will block the pulmonary capillaries, sudden blockage. Patient will be breathless, diaphoretic, chest pain, mimic MMI. Right, mimic MMI, that's a class of an acute chest syndrome. All these are basic classic crisis, right? In addition to that, obviously, like I said, anemia will be there. Peripheral smear, simple. Everyone will know sickle cell. And then the other name for sickle cell is drapanocytes they look like a boat so we call them drapanocytes fine okay that's the other name of sickle diabetes sickle can also have spherocytes sickle can also have target cells all these are evidence of membrane damage but undoubtedly when i have sickle diabetes i'll be more than happy just two important points here 
So if let's say it's an recessive case, right? If it's a carrier, I won't see a readily sickled RBC. So what do I do? I have a test called a sickling test. So what do I do in sickling test is I'm going to do the deoxygenated state. I'm going to kind of implement it in a lab. So what we do in sickling test, there's an image of a sickling test. There's a lab test done in case of recessive patient, a screening test, that's all. So we induce the deoxygenated state. We add sodium metabisulfate. So when we add sodium metabisulfate, this might come in an exam, especially for someone who is preparing for an INICT. This will consume or it will remove the oxygen. Once it removes the oxygen, we'll actually seal, we'll mix, uh, put a drop of blood, sodium metabisulfate, put it in a slide, put a cover slip and seal the corners because oxygen should not come inside. So whatever oxygen is available there, it will suck them, it will remove them, sodium metabisulfate, right? It removes oxygen. So once it removes oxygen, I'm going to artifactually create a deoxygenated state, right? This will definitely induce sickling. It will induce sickling in a person who is having a problem. If you are normal, nothing happens, right? So we uh, go and have a look at the peripheral uh, smear again after some time. If you have the sickled RPCs, then definitely sickling test is supposed to be positive. For screening test, not diagnostic and is used only for screening test. In a, a homozygous sickle cell you can see them even in normal peripheral smear. Then I won't do a sickling test. Obviously, investigation charges, HPLC and hypoglobin electrophosis. Just a word about the treatment. Sickle is the first disease which has gotten a superb treatment with CRISPR. Okay, there's been uh, it's been uh, five six years totally uh, from now. The patient also has come that uh, after doing CRISPR technology, there's a technology of like a, a modality of genetic therapy where uh, the vaso occlusive crisis, the painful episodes have reduced a lot and the lifespan has improved a lot for the patient. Right, that's all regarding sickle anemia. Uh, I'll stop it with one question. I want you guys to answer your X-ray appearance in the skull of hair on end appearance. Can I see them in a sickle cell anemia? Yes or no? Comment in the below section and we'll definitely look at them in the next class. See you soon. Bye-bye.